Welcome to Rialto Channel's Real Woman podcast. I'm Francesca Vatican. Throughout March and April, Rialto Channel is focusing on female actors and filmmakers who shine the spotlight on the talent and importance of the female perspective in film. See what real women can do. The series is presented by iconic New Zealand TV personality Judy Bailey. And Judy joins me now. Hi, Judy. Good to talk to you. Lovely to talk to you too. Now, I'm just wondering, have you watched the I Am series that is playing as part of the Real Woman series on Rialto Channel? Because I thought that this might resonate with you considering the work that you do with Women's Refuge. Honestly, it's the most powerful um, series of television that I've seen in a long time. Those stories really resonated with me. And I think most particularly because of the psychological violence that's in there, which is so insidious and it creeps up on you. And so many of the women that we see um, at the Women's Refuge have been through this. And sometimes the psychological violence takes longer to recover from than the actual physical abuse. And often... Um, and Jury, who, who heads um, Refuge, um, would say that this uh, psychological violence often um, comes before uh, a physical abuse. So, yeah, it was chilling stuff. And those images and stories stayed with me so long after the final frame. What are your other picks from the Real, Real Women series that you've enjoyed? What I'm really looking forward to are the ones, um, the documentaries, really, I think. Um, Vada by Agnes Banda, um, who is known as the queen of, uh, of French cinema. Um, she is a director. And in this, uh, in this documentary, she turns the camera on herself. So that promises to be a really revealing uh, documentary. Um, the other ones that really interest me are the French movies. I'm, I'm um, a sucker for a good French movie. Uh, they're usually uh, quirky and have a lot of twists and turns in them. And there are two um, psychological thrillers that I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, in Your Hands with Kristen Scott Thomas and All That Divides Us with Catherine Deneuve. So, oh, yeah, looking forward to that. Two iconic, <laughs> two iconic actresses. Yes, yes. Um, and, in fact, I think, actually, having said French movies, In Your Hands is actually not a French movie, but um, All That Divides Us certainly is, yeah. Mm. Look, the series captures the work of some remarkable and inspiring actors and filmmakers. I'm curious, who throughout your broadcasting career inspired or mentored you? Oh, goodness. Um, way back when I very first began in journalism, Marcia Russell inspired me. She was a print journalist initially um, and then went on into broadcasting. And she was a feminist and uh, a really insightful reporter. So Marcia, first of all, when I started in the, um, the newsroom in Christchurch back in the 70s, it's a long time ago, um, there were two incredible women there who took me under their wing. I was 18 at the time. Um, and they, they taught me um, the importance of listening, not only to what's said, but what's not said. So, um, yeah, I owe Jane Edwards and Helen Holmes a, a huge debt. Because I imagine it was a very male-dominated newsroom, was it? It was. Yes, it was. Although, having said that, um, broadcasting was pretty much in its infancy in those days. And um, we were all thrown in the deep end. Mm. Um, and I was allowed to pursue my interests, um, which at the time included things like um, a series on abortion, for instance. Um, which was top of mind in those days. And 
um, the South Tonight actually dedicated three nights of the whole program to my investigation. So mm -hmm. I, I can't complain about um, being, you know, kept back because I was a woman. Do you think that women are well represented in broadcasting today from where you sit? That's a tricky one because I'm not in there um, mm. now. You know, I'm very much sitting outside of the system. So um, when I was in the newsroom, um, it was a delight to work with people like Jude Smith and um, Melanie Jones, who are both really excellent um, editors, uh, program editors. So um, I was very lucky in that uh, sense. But now I don't see so many women in management roles in, in the news particularly. And um, I think... I think that's a pity. And there is, of course, this, this impression that there is an age limit on women in media, which is a ridiculous notion. But did you mm. see that idea in action uh, here in New Zealand? Um, did you ever feel any pressure I, as to how you looked or... How I looked? Um, I think subtly, maybe, mm, maybe. Mm. Um, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, and nobody ever said anything, you know. I think it's often an expectation that women put on themselves uh, or other mm. women maybe put on them um, as much as men. Um, and I'm lo I look to the states, you know, that um, where, where Botox rules, um, but there are some really amazing women who've stayed in broadcasting for a long time, mm, like Barbara mm. Walters, and, um, and I'm thinking particularly of Diane Sawyer, um, who was really one of my role models, and I, I thought she was a wonderful and um, insightful reporter, an elegant um, thinker, and, yeah, uh, and her age certainly didn't hold her back and she wasn't a great devotee of the, of the old Botox or, or any of that, you know? Would have, do you think social media would have been a blessing or a curse for you if, if it was around when you were presenting One News? Definitely a curse. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking to the wrong person. Honestly, I'm a complete technophobe and I, I really um, have a, a healthy... Um, disrespect for social media. <laughs> I think I, I I never use it, although I have accounts in, in on Twitter and Facebook and whatnot. But I I steer clear of it. Um, I think my hide is not quite as thick as it should be, and I think that people can hide behind their anonymity and say incredibly hurtful things about you about your performance. Um, about how you look, um, and I'd rather avoid that. I'd rather avoid it, you know, um, for the bad and the good, because I know there's there's lots of good involved in, in, in comments as well, but, you know, I'd rather distance myself. I tend to do that myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm curious too as to, you know, so much has so much has changed over the last few decades and now we've got streaming and that's changed the entertainment landscape. It seemed to mm. me a bit for women because there's sort of there's a lot more opportunity for us to create content and for it to be viewed. Do you think that um that that streaming has sort of changed the entertainment landscape for women? Um, I think they have more opportunities, certainly. Um but I wonder how many people are watching what they produce, mm. you know, um, um, and that goes for everybody, men and women, in the digital environment. It's very hard to track your audience, um, I think. Um, so, yeah, hard to say, really. But certainly I'm constantly coming across women who are producing really innovative stuff for um, the digital platforms. I've always wanted to know how you really truly feel about being called the mother of a nation because when I was younger I used to say to my mum, 
but how would Judy's kids feel? I mean, they're her mother. <laughs> and I, always, I always used to wonder how you and your family felt about this name that was sort of thrust upon you. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> um, I am embarrassed. <laughs> I just oh, think, you? and the kids, the kids just, you know, I was the mother who was never there at six o'clock for dinner, you know? So how could I possibly be? The mother of the nation. No, it's, um, yeah, heavens knows where it came from, but it seems to have stuck. <laughs> oh, well, Judy, thank you so much for your time today. It's a delight to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Francesca. It was lovely to talk to you too.